Hello and welcome to another tutorial on dev.java and we are looking at the primitive types and uh, we looked at the integer types, uh, character types, boolean types and uh, let's look at the floating points now, uh, a floating point literal and we said that literal is anything in your source code that is directly written for example for numbers it's directly written as, as digits right so there is no interpretation no evaluation it's just pure number right it's a constant uh, a floating point literal is of type float if it ends with the letter capital F or a small f right and we said that uh, for floating points uh, uh, the default is double if we want to specifically mention that it's a float which means uh, we tell the compiler and uh, after that uh, Java runtime that this is a 32-bit uh, floating point which only holds like six to seven decimal places of accuracy I mean uh, these days uh, um, memory is not a problem again all this business of floating point or double um, is twofold right the one is how much memory you're going to save if you switch from double to float right the other one is, uh, do you save anything on the computation, the speed? Because uh, multiplying, for example, two double uh, values uh, might take uh, more time than floating point. Now, the thing here is that CPUs these days are already 64 bits, right? And uh, not only that, they have even uh, support for vectorization, which means they have much larger than much larger than 32 bit uh, or 64 bit uh, registers, for example. Intel at this point they have like AVX uh, 256 or a uh, basically AVX2 um, or basically um, they can have registers and Intel CPUs can have registers up to 512 bits wide so they can uh, maybe um, they can add uh, eight simultaneously add for example eight uh, 64 bit uh, uh, double values which is great right so I mean these days uh, using floats uh, it's it's really not recommended it's better to stick with double I mean it doesn't really save that much on computation time um, uh, and uh, it doesn't really save that much either on memory because memory is very cheap these days so um, unless you have a specific need to switch to 30 bit floating point it's better to stick with the default which is double the floating point types float and double can also be expressed as a, a scientific notation e means e or a small e or capital e these are the exponent so scientific notation we have the decimal place and uh, it always has one digit for the um, before the point and all the other digits are after the point and then you have e which uh, means exponent the power of 10 and then you specify a plus or minus number i believe you can even use a decimal value for the uh, it doesn't have to be integer so we can go ahead and test this so let's move all this code um, so this was test three public static void test four so this is our previous code discussion that we had on the integer literals and bit masks and all the all the good stuff and now let's look at the floating point floating point literals right and we said that it's either float uh, a small f or capital F or double which is a small d or capital D or we don't need to write it right nothing so if I if we say var x1 equals 2.5 and we see what type the compiler this deduces for this local variable now right now it says this variable is not being used so it's just a warning so let's use it and now let's look at the type and the compiler is uh, uh, basically deducing that the type of x1 is double if i put f a small f or capital f area now the compiler deduces that this is float and again we said that var is used uh, in java for local variables right uh, uh, and the compiler is able to automatically deduce the type it looks at the right hand side and then uh, um, deduces the type now can we um, use final on uh, with uh, with var and the answer is yes we can still use it and again uh, i mentioned it many times before that if you have a local variable you are de defining it declaring it and assigning a value to it and you you know that the value is not going to be uh, this variable is not going to be reassigned it's better to declare it as final in the context of local variable right so if you run this um, 
we get 2.5 and uh, this print line uh, is calling the float so it has a overload for float and also a overload for double and um, um, we said that uh, if we try to do a uh, print f so we want to print a percent uh, point let's say 10 decimal places of accuracy right f and then x1 to 5555 so this is a very round round number so um we're not getting any uh, errors as you can see if i say 251 um the float overload uh, of the print line can uh, uh, correctly display the exact number if we go with 10 decimal places accuracy as you can see the actual value is uh, 5099999 so what this print line does it just rounds up based on the fact that it knows how many decimal places of accuracy um, the a float can hold if you want to see the exact 10 basically this means that get all the bits in the memory that represent this variable the uh, this variable is pointing to that memory and then interpret it as a uh, floating point number that has 10 decimal places of accuracy as you can see the exact value is not uh, had, uh, is not 2.51 it's 2.509999 etc right so there is a loss of accuracy obviously if i say 7 i think it's going to work fine yes and now it's fine if we say 8 we should start losing accuracy yes so floating point seven decimal places of accuracy in java uh, double obviously is up to 17 and this is what we discussed before all right um and uh, the other thing is that uh, uh, all these uh, uh, value type classes uh, value type classes uh, like uh, integer float and double they also have uh, uh, wrapper classes so i can say float uh, x4 or f1 is 2.51 right and at the moment the thing here is that it doesn't allow directly uh, implicit conversion from a double to a float so we can say 2.51 f and if we do sysout f1 dot class And it says Java Lang float. So this is a value type classes, just like any other value type class, it's final. So you cannot <clears throat> overload it and it's marked as a value type. And hopefully in the future we have a uh, um, <clears throat> flattening capability for this uh, kind of uh, immutable classes, which represent, um, represent numbers, numeric values. All right, so double D1, 1, 2, 3.4. Again, uh, 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 double floating point literal. The default type is double, 64 bit. And E2, uh, let's look, try to look at the scientific notation. Scientific uh, notation for uh, floating point numbers. So uh, final uh, double X2 is, uh, um, let's say we want to say 2.552. So 255.2333, for example, right? And uh, you can declare it as this way or you can uh, declare it as a scientific notation. So X3 is, you move all the decimal all the way, uh, you keep only one digit, right? So 2.55333 E2, you give it a um, exponent base 10. Obviously this is base 10 and x3 255 and 0 0.333 so scientific notation sometimes makes life easier and uh, can we use uh, decimal values or floating point values for the exponent and the answer is no so let me see if i can put it in uh, round brackets no so we cannot really do um uh fractional exponents in the scientific notation but we can have negative exponents that's allowed as you can see it uh, moves uh, uh, adds uh, moves the number to the right or the decimal point to the left right x to the e to the negative 2 10 to the power of negative 2 so you can use plus or negative plus is not needed because uh, the default is positive exponent uh, you can also use negative exponent in the scientific notation. You can also um, use capital E or a small e. Both are valid, right? 
let me make the exponent positive that's valid right so this is e is part of the floating point literals which uh, uh, tells the compiler we're using a scientific notation what if uh, note that uh, even if this is written in scientific notation i typically prefer to use a small e uh, when i use the print line or any of the prints from this print stream uh, uh, object out out a stream you see that it converts it to a it doesn't uh, show a scientific notation but we can in fact uh, uh, do a print format a print f and uh, tell the uh, runtime to actually print it to the console as a scientific notation and i believe it's a percent e so let's let's try that yes so if you use percent %e, it actually goes and uh, uh, try, uh, prints as a scientific notation. Now you see the, the, the exponent is two digits, not one, but uh, I think you can uh, uh, probably can uh, use more options. No, um, I'm pretty sure it has some customization options. Every one of these has, cause for example, now I'm rounding the, 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 the number part to one decimal place. So 255333 becomes 2.6. I can round it to um, three decimal to 2553, right? Uh, and then uh, um, I can give it a space. Let's say I want eight, uh, eight characters to be printed for this number. This is, uh, uh, so um, you can uh, do some customization, but the general rule is that percent %e means I want to print as scientific notation, right? Can you print uh, a uh, integer as scientific notation? Let's say I want to print 25 uh, yeah, Java lang integer. So it says that you cannot do it. Percent %e only is used with, uh, with floating point, like float or double. So it doesn't work with the... Uh, um, it doesn't work with integer types or line types, right? So if you want to print to the console or to a text file as a uh, scientific notation, use percent %e from the print format. So character and a string literals, we looked at these literals of type cars and a string uh, UTF-16. We said that Java supports UTF-16, which is backward compatible with UTF-8. UTF-8 is one byte representation or eight bits. UTF-8 is backward compatible with ASCII. ASCII is only developed or specific to the English alphabet, which only uses seven bits, right? If your editor and file system allow it, you can uh, use such characters directly in your code. So um, in, in Eclipse, you have to also enable it. So if you want to use characters that are not part of the ASCII, so um, basically uh, then you have to use the actual character. And then in order to print it to the console, you have to make sure that your console actually supports printing those characters, which means your operating system can understand those un uh, Unicode uh, characters, right? So it's twofold. One is you use it in source code. So the Java compiler doesn't complain. It understands that you're trying to use a Unicode character that is not part of the English alphabet. That's fine. And this is the problem with C++. For example, we said that even in the source code, the C++ compilers only support UTF-8 characters, which means you cannot use any arbitrary character in your um, C++ source code, but Java, even Java compiler supports UTF-16, but then you have to basically kind of uh, encode those characters as two byte uh, hex, right? So if your editor and file system allow it, you can use such characters directly in your code. If not, you can use a Unicode escape, such as, so when you use a character like this, uh, let's actually copy it and see this. So if I car uh, U1, is basically uh, this and then sys out u1 let's see if my editor uh, if we can actually see this character on the console uh yeah so let's do a backslash n here yeah it's a character something like this a c with a carrot on top of it right um capital C with a uh, circumflex or a carrot on top of it. See my console allows printing these characters as the actual Unicode character, right? Uh, so um, Unicode escape such as, or you can use capital S backslash U O O D or S U for Sinor uh, or in Spanish. So this kind of Unicode characters, let me zoom in. 
you see these uh, ones are not part of the English alphabet but they're very close let's say these are Spanish right and these are supported in Unicode UTF-8 or UTF-16 or you can use any of these with Java it's fine uh, always use single codes for cal literals and double codes for a string literals right and we said that a string literals in Java they completely treated as a, a string object um, so basically if I say uh, hello what the compiler does is obviously right now uh, the compiler expects me to assign this to something but let's say I do a sysout hello so in Java, what happens is, is Java compiler creates a, a string object and points it to this uh, a string literal. So this a string literal is not a, a raw literal. So um, this is actually representing an object. So I can call the dot on it. And you see, I have all the methods of the string object uh, available to me. So that's a nice thing that they did in Java. In C++ or C, if you're familiar with a string literals, you know that... Uh, so let me type this here in Java a, a string literal uh, maps to a, a string object and you have the all the a string methods on it right now a strings are final so you cannot mutate them but that's fine this is a in in Java in C++ or C these are also immutable right um, uh, so there is no conflict between mapping a string literal which by definition has to be immutable to a string object in Java because a string objects are final immutable in C or C++ um, uh, a, a string uh, literals map to a character arrays character array and because arrays are built in built-in types you don't there they don't represent any actual uh, C++ class or object in C you don't have the concept of the class right so it made sense that to map the uh, string literals to character arrays so we don't have no methods available right these are not objects they don't represent a string literal doesn't map to a class now in C++ I believe C++ 11 or 14 I'm not sure they added a string literal uh, namespace right and what happens with that here is that uh, uh, it's a very interesting concept they enable this feature if you write hello and uh, use the s character from the string literal name namespace then what happens in c plus the compiler actually maps this a string literal to a, a string object in c plus to the std a string object that's basically what also happens in java in java by default uh, uh, a string literal doesn't map to a character array they could but they decided not to because then uh, it makes life difficult right because character arrays are built in although in java character arrays are objects but if you already have an immutable class that represents character arrays and it has very nice methods why not map a string literal to that a string class right so that's why we can have uh, a type a hello which is a raw string literal but then we can call the two uppercase method for example because uh, at the compile time the compiler replaces this hello literal with a uh, this line of code so it says uh, a string s some variable equals hello right and then uh, so let me put it actually underneath so the compiler uh, assigns this to a reference and then uh, this line of code this sysout is actually called on that s reference something like this right that's why uh, we can call uh, all the S methods in the string class on the string literals because they don't map to character arrays they map to a string object which is a nice feature um, the same happens i believe in python in python also uh, they map the string literals to a string uh, object which is the reasonable thing to do obviously c++ wanted to be backward compatible with c they, so they had to go through this um, uh, but now they introduced this uh, uh, suffix s from a, a string literal namespace and this tells the compiler hey i don't want this to be mapped to a character array i want this to be mapped to a std string which is a recommended way of dealing with strings in c++ these days 
All right, double quotes for strings. Unicode escape sequence backslash is a, a special character which can define a, a, a escape sequence. If you want to tell the compiler, hey, this backslash, I, I actually want a backslash. You have to use double backslash because the first backslash escapes the second one. And this converts, this maps to a single backslash character. The Java programming language also supports a few special escape sequences for char and strings. Backslash B is a backspace. Backslash T is a tab character. Backslash N is a line feed. Um, um, in uh, operating systems such as Windows, we have R, carriage return. So uh, usually what happens in uh, some operating system, when you say backslash R, it actually returns the carrot back to the beginning of the same line. It doesn't go to the next line. Backslash N definitely goes to the beginning of the next line. Backslash F is form feed. We rarely use this. Backslash R is carriage return. Backslash double code, it escapes the code, converts the code in a, as a, a, tells the compiler to consider this as a raw code. I want to actually print the code. Backslash single code, and then backslash backslash, which escapes backslash. So all the special characters like a B, T, N, F, or these ones, they can be escaped with, and then use a, they can be used as an escape sequence. Um, Let's look at the difference between, uh, uh, so we know that backslash n is new line. So if say, sys, uh, or let's create a string, s1. And again, it's better to, um, uh, let's say hello, and then backslash n world. Note that we don't put any a space between these because in a string literal, a space is actually means a space character. But then uh, when we actually print this to the console, the runtime, the JVM interprets this as going to a new line, right? So if I run this, you see we have hello on one line and then world on the another line. So this is a special character. Now if I want to actually print backslash n, um, now as you can see backslash n is printed because I escaped the backslash, which means I'm telling the compiler and then the runtime that, hey, um, this backslash backslash means I want an actual backslash to be printed as a character, right? So there's also a special null literal character. We said that for uh, characters, null character is backslash zero, right? And we said that backslash zero is uh, uh, something that is like no character is there. It just means a null character. Uh, see no character is printed even if I put it backslash zero it means uh, no character it's like nothing is there right and uh, if for any data type it's good to have a null null value for example we know that for integers float of the null value is just zero for integers or zero zero for doubles right what about characters the null value for character is backslash uh, zero right we said that we have to escape the zero and this actually converts, uh, this represents a character with, with all bits, um, with all bits uh, uh, set to zero, right? We said that the null value for any type, any data type, integer, float, a, a reference type, a pointer type, a character type, the null value is defined as when all the bits of that uh, memory address is set to zero, right? Um, and we know that in C, for example, we have C alloc, for example, which means uh, not only allocates the memory, but it initializes everything to every bit to zero, which means it initializes to a default value, right? So the null literal may be assigned to any variable. And we said that obviously a string is also a reference type and the default value for reference type is null. And, uh, and um, when we say sys out s2, if it's null, I believe it doesn't throw a null pointer exception. It just prints null to the console. So null has been treated properly with these print lines, right? So if it checks if the reference is null, if it is, it just prints null. I think, I don't think you can actually, if you type null, for example, in a string literal, so each character is interpreted literally, which means you're not getting a null a string out of that. But if we try to add, append a null a string or null reference, um, it just adds it, right? So um, for a strings, uh, null is treated as just a null. It just prints null, right? So it's a special treatment for a strings. 
Um, the null literal may be assigned to any variable except variables of primitive types. There is little you can do with a null value, and we always have this problem with null pointer exception. They made it nicer in, from JDK 15. The, the compiler can help you a lot in determining where the null pointer exception happens. Uh, having nulls or checking references, comparing them with null is always a code smell and uh, means uh, it's best not to do that obviously now we have the case for the optional class in java which means it's a class it's a thin wrapper can hold the value or not depending on whether you are dealing with nodes or not so it's the best practice at the moment to use optionals return optionals from a method etc therefore null is often used in programs as a marker to indicate that some object is unavailable it's just a null reference it's not pointing to anything finally there's also a special kind of literal called a class literal uh, formed by taking a type name and appending dot class and we said that even primitive types can uh, uh, you can call the dot class on this and the reason is that at runtime uh, every type must have some information associated with it that's because for the java reflection api this has to be done at runtime right even primitive types because uh, you can have a method that you want to reflectively call and that method might take some primitive parameters arguments so uh, at runtime you have to specify what the class or meta information of that type is for example a string dot class this refers to the object of type class that represents the type itself these are meta information right the type information so i hope you, uh, you enjoyed this lecture please stay tuned and i'll see you in the next one